Welcome back, my fellow duplicates, to Oxygen Not Included. Today, we are taking a look at the brand new upgrade that's going to be available here in a couple of weeks in Oxygen Not Included. So this is the Automation Innovation Pack. And as you can imagine, it is smack full of different automation pieces of equipment that we can put inside of our base to really just automate just about anything we want. Not only that, it's got some other fun things that we can play with here. As you have already heard, the hammer thing actually makes some cool little noise there, but let's dig on into it. The most obvious thing over here is going to be this pixel pack. So this is a new piece of equipment that's available under furniture, and depending on whether or not if you send a high or a low signal to it via the automation, you can change to see what colors it's presenting here. So in this uh, spot right here, it actually is just static. However, the one that is changing right here has a couple different patterns and therefore we cycle between that. The reason we can cycle between those two different states right there is because we're using a brand new uh, timer sensor over here, which is actually different than the one that is tied to the cycle. So as you can see right here, the green duration is three and the red duration is one. And I can change these per second to make them whatever I want. I can even go from seconds down here to cycles. So if I wanted to go for like 10 cycles on green and then one cycle on red, I could do that. Meep, you're kind of noisy, dude. <laughs> These things actually strike uh, different pieces of equipment in the game and they will make a different noise. So if you wanted to make some music, you could definitely do that. But let's just go ahead and kind of show the difference here. If we wanted to throw in some pipes, it also depends on how long the stuff is as well as you heard in the intro. So you can hear what the wires sound like, but if we actually look at kind of like the end of the pipes here, you can actually hear that. So meep, take a step to the left and we can hear what the pipes sound like. Cool. Yeah, you can actually make the printing pod make noise as well. Yeah. <laughs> okay, some of the other sensors that are in the game here is a wattage sensor. So this will actually tell you how much power is being consumed on the line. So you can see we have a potential load, and as you can hover over the wires, you'd get that number here. But this sensor here can actually send out an automation signal depending on how much is in use. So for example, if we were to put down a couple of lamps here and plug them in, we should be able to see that the wattage sensor is going to tell us that we're consuming more power. There we go. So we can now see that we are currently using 72 watts on this line. It's the same sort of report that we get here with the current load. Um, and as you can see right here, depending on what we're doing, I've set this up to be kind of like a power meter. So that is above zero, and this is above 100, and so on and so forth, to show me just how close I am to exploding the wire. Pretty cool. A couple of other ideas that have come up for the wanted sensor here is maybe potentially how much we are adding to the system, so how much power we're generating, or how much we are generating or consuming over a given amount of time. That way we can kind of diagnose an individual system rather than digging into the actual reports over here to see what the total base is doing. You can kind of maybe break it down and look at it in smaller chunks right there. I think something like that would be pretty cool. All right, so those are cool. But on to my primary example here. I tried to come up with a scenario that actually allows me to use all of the new automation stuff here in one single setup. It's kind of intense because it is a lot of automation, but stick with me here. So inside of here, the most important thing that we have here is the new automation ribbon. Just about everything is kind of tied to the same sort of concept. And that concept is that you can now write and read up to four different signals that run in the exact same line right here. So whereas an automation wire normally was either high or low, basically green or red, you can now do up to four of those in the exact same line right here. So this is kind of like the heavy watt wire equivalent of automation wires. Now, in order to write onto those, to set it from red to green, essentially you need a piece of automation equipment down here, which is a writer. So you bring in a normal automation wire and then you select which bit you're going to write it to or which line you want it to write it. So for example, here I have this output set to green and if you look at the writer and I set this to one, you see that that is like that, so on and so forth. And then on the flip side of this, we have a reader. So this is just the output of that. So what I'm going to do is plug that into a new piece of equipment, this is the automated notifier right here. So this right here will actually put a notification in the top left if it ever goes uh, high. So I'm gonna set that to bit number two and watch what happens when I set this down to bit two. I now get a notification up here in the top left. And I can name this thing. So I'm gonna name this one test one, two, three. So when we go from low to high right there, boom, test one, two, three pops up in the top left. Cool thing about this is we can actually set this to pause the game. We can also set this to zoom to that location. And we can also make it like a really 
um, have a notification sound if we wanted to. So if I turn this off real quick, and we kind of look over here, and then all of a sudden something horribly goes wrong, whoop, it's going to bring me into this spot, and it can even pause the game. So pretty cool. You might be able to use that to kind of save yourself some headaches in the future. Okay, so now that we know how the automation ribbon works, let me run you through this scenario. Essentially, what I have over here is a tank on the right, and this is, has a bunch of water inside of it. However, this water is incredibly germy. It's full of all of these food poisoning. So what I want to do is get rid of this food poisoning, and I'm going to use a liquid reservoir inside of a uh, an enclosed area full of chlorine right there. So since we have a tank inside of that's exposed to chlorine, it will then kill the germs that are in the water that it, it's holding. So I have a whole automation signal thing that is set up to kind of bring the water in, hold it for a certain amount of time, and then output it over here to the left. I also have other sensors over here to kind of make sure that the operation is safe. So what I have is a gas element sensor that is looking for chlorine inside of this environment right here. We also have an automation signal that is going to send in water to this reservoir for a given amount of time. It's then going to hold it there for a given amount of time and offload it. So. What I want to do is set these to 400 seconds each. And the last automation signal is going to come from our liquid reservoir. Yes, that's right. They have now added automation to the liquid reservoirs and to the gas reservoirs as well. They work like a smart battery. So that is awesome. And it's gonna be super useful for us. Now, another thing that they did here is that they allowed the liquid vents or the conveyor chutes or the gas vents, the ability to close. So that way we don't need to keep using all of these liquid shutoff valves if we just want to drip water out of this pipe. So for example, this is looking for a current amount of germs in this hmm, pipe. If I were to flip this from true to false sort of thing, you can see that the liquid vent here will close off and the water now just flows past it. Super useful and that will really simplify a lot of things. I love it. Absolutely awesome. The other thing that I have over here is a solid filter for our conveyor rail. This is something that I've used a lot of in the modded playthrough of Oxygen Not Included. So I'm really glad to see that both this and the automation signal on the liquid reservoir are being brought into the game uh, for, for vanilla. Absolutely awesome, Super going to, it's going to be super useful. So what I'm looking for over here is a consumable ore. I'm going to ship in a little bit of bleach stone. And we also have some raw minerals in this environment as well. So depending on what ends up on the line, we're only going to take the bleach stone off of it. The rest of it, we'll just move on by. So there we go. You can see a little bit of bleach stone here has found its way into the shipping rail and that is being filtered out and is dropping into this environment. I have it hooked up to an automation signal just to kind of shut this conveyor chute off uh, once it reaches a certain amount of pressure inside of here. It's not really important. I just kind of put it there as an example. Now, all of these different automation signals here actually get written onto the automation ribbon and they write onto the first three bits here which then flows up here to the signal selector. And I use the output of that to write into the fourth bit location on this wire, which then goes back on over here to this liquid pump and the pixel pack right here. So red is that it is not safe to run and it is currently not going to pump any water. And then if it turns green, then we are going to actually pump some water from over here to the left. So that means this thing is operating. So just so you understand how this signal selector is working, let's go ahead and show you a quick example here. We have several signal switches, which should be available to switch now without duplicates. That is in the patch notes. So that is one really, really handy thing in case you guys have been using hydro sensors like I have for a very, very long time. I'm gonna turn these right here to false. So you can see that we have a couple of lows and some highs right there. So I think of this as kind of like Plinko. So what happens here is as I switch these inputs over here, it actually flips this from looking from here to there. Uh, and then this one will rotate the one on the far right. So you can kind of go to that set right there. So you can really send any of these signals over here on the left, any one of these four to the output on the right based on what you're doing here. So in my setup right here, what I'm saying is I'm taking this signal and then I'm adding it to this signal and then I'm adding it to this signal. So this is actually kind of a three and setup right here. So if all three are true, then the signal is going to be able to go from this input D all the way to the output signal, any other combination and it will not run. And then if you look at the signal distributor, that's the same sort of thing. It's moving from left to right here. So the input is then flowing to any one of these outputs. So right now I'm taking this and saying that the, so in this example here, I'm kind of doing the same thing, but opposite and saying that we are not pumping water. 
So that should show up over here in the notification on the far left. I don't know, you can use it however you want, right? This is a really powerful block for automation, and I think you guys can come up with some really creative things to do with it. All right, so let me plug this thing in and fire it up. All right, so here's this process in operation. So over here, you can see that all the green signals have aligned. Our signal selector is sending a good one, and now all of the pixel packs are saying we're good to go, the pump is on, we're bringing in germy water into the system. So that is going to flow into this liquid reservoir, and then once inside of here, we're going to continue to kill off all of these food poisoning germs because we're in that chlorine environment. So this right here is going to run for a good amount of time. Um, you can set it to whatever you want. I have it set to 400 seconds. Oops, we ran out of power. Dupes. Matter of fact, you can see, oh no, come on dupes. Okay, so you can see right here, we are able to fill this up in 379 seconds. I think that's because I have the current high threshold set to 75% right there. So we have 3,796 kilograms of water with 41,000 so and so forth of germs. And then coming off of this automation signal, I have a little bit of a, a buffer gate right here just to kind of keep this door open for a given amount of time. And during that time, we're killing off all of these germs. Look at that. So that right there looked to be about 100 seconds or so. All right, so now this system here is going to continue to unload all of its liquid until it is empty. And then only at that point will it actually reset and we can move on to the next thing here. So you can see we are now pumping out all of this water and it's going all the way over here to the left and it is nice and clean. Mmm, look at that, no germs. Actually, I guess the red duration needs to be about equal to the input. All right, so here we go, the process once again. Green, turned on the right, there we go. We're running all of this stuff to the left into the liquid reservoir. We're going to kill those germs off. You can see the amount of power we're using up over here. A little bit under 300 watts. And there we go, it turned off. Now the water is flowing out over here to the left, nice and clean. So that right there is one example that pretty much uses just about all the different automation things that we have available to us in order to do something like purify water. So that's pretty cool. There's a lot of fun stuff to play with here. But there's one more thing that I think is really, really awesome, and you might have noticed it already. This little guy right down here, Sweepy. So Sweepy is our own little vacuum. It'll actually crawl around on the ground and pick up debris for us and bring it back to its little home station over here. If you take a look at this, you can see it's full of little uh, dirt, copper ore, all of that good stuff. It'll actually pick up liquids as well. So a super handy little bot that we can build and just have a lot of fun with. Not only that, it's adorable, isn't it? I really, really, really like Sweepy. <laughs> Look, it even has little animations when it encounters a, a duplicate. Just so happy, and then it's like, oh, look at the edge! Ooh, don't fall down there! Let's move on over here to the right. And not only that, check this out. Hey, look at me! Boom! He put a little ox light on top of Sweepy's head. <laughs> uh, so yes, you can put your own little decorations on top of little bots like this, or in my case, some ox light, and looks like it's giving off oxygen as it's moving around. It's pretty awesome. I love it. I'm looking forward to building way too many of these. And you know what, Meep? I think that's about it. Hopefully you guys are looking forward to the automation innovation pack here. I sure am. Glad to be back, by the way. Thank you guys for watching. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting subscribe or maybe resubscribe. And thank you for all of your support with the recent hack and all of the problems I had here recently. <sighs> it's good to be back. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day. Stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar, out.